Hi there, how's it going? My name is Trolls. Welcome to Soundpaint. Welcome to Rhythmic R Acoustics. Rhythmic R is an instrument and a library that I essentially designed to myself. I wanted to have a new tool that would allow me to just get inspired immediately and start writing music. So often when I compose, Rhythmic R is the first thing I grab just to get something going. It features over 28,000 different rhythmic fragments that are all running through the arpeggiator inside of Soundpaint. So this is fully an arpeggiated library that'll adapt to your host tempo. There's an infinite amount of ways that you can utilize this library. It has certain core groups of instruments. So for example, we have electric basses, we have electric guitars, we have electroacoustic guitars, electric violins, we have tonal percussion, we have tonal strings, that could be, for example, barimbao. We have modified symphony orchestras, but they're all played in ways that are very easy to adapt to create an aura around your music. So when you hear rhythmic R, you'll notice that it's somewhat friendly to all sorts of chords when you use it. So it's not invading your music, it's truly just creating an aura, a feel, a vibe that you can get started with. And it's very easy to just put your own music on top of that. So it's more a tonal, textural arpeggiation tool just to drive inspiration. And it's also one of our most popular instruments. It's featured in like thousands of movies and blockbusters, TV shows, video games in Overwatch 1 and 2 you'll notice that R is gracefully sprinkled across the entire game. It just has a vibe to it. It's really good for moving pulses and rhythmic music, also rhythmic orchestral music. I like to think of R a little bit as the engine inside of a car. We don't see the engine, but it's obviously helping propel the car. It's invisible in its ideal state, but it still provides a mood, a propelling sensation. You know, it's a little bit like sonic perfume, we know it's there, but we can't see it. And with all that said, I say we just get inside of the door here. Let's uh, create some sonic perfume together and see where this lands. This is an inspiration tool. Use it freely, use it forbiddenly, use it however you want. There's an infinite amount of ways of using it. So yeah, let's go deep. Our one acoustics contains eight root directories. First, we got our mains here. This is where you're gonna find every single aura. So for example, we got the bases loaded now. And if you look down here, it says unique R per key. That means that every single key has unique R on it. They're all in the same root key. And for that reason, they all just work together. So if I play with the basses here, you're just gonna hear all these kind of different rhythmic vibes and textures that are all adapting to your host DAW tempo. I actually really like just this first one here. It has a nice sort of cinematic groove to it. So what I did was just to play this single note here and then just add our hybrid emotions to it as well. It's super easy to use together. It's almost like the one finger composer kind of dream come true. If I was to score like an underscore for a movie or a game, whatever, this would be more than plenty to drive the dialogue and have sort of a feel underneath. But let me show another example here, also using the same patch up here, the R basis, and then combining with another hybrid emotion, but in this case, it's aggression. It's a little more harsh. Not all the R's are the same. So when we have these different instrument categories, for example, electric bass here, they'll be sort of soft to kind of fussy and then into sort of distorted. So we have all the different kind of textures, different kind of rhythms, different kind of R's. Uh, let me play a couple of the more harsh ones here. There's one, whereas this one down here is a bit soft. And this one down here has a little more harmonics. and we can combine them too.
So you can play R standalone, you can combine them in any way you want. In this case here, I just used two layers of sort of distorted, that's more than enough, and then layered a little bit here with the hybrid emotions aggression. It's never been easier just to sound awesome out of the box. And I take no shame in the fact that these tracks are simple. I still have full control. I can mangle them any way I want. Let me just take one of the bases here and demonstrate how you can play that in every single key you want. So if we take this first fragment we played in the beginning, I'll click here on our sound mode, I'll go into one note stretch, and then I'll click the given key I want, this one for example. I've always loved the sound of playing an electric bass like a guitar. I combined two different basses here to create this kind of motion. So simple, our hybrid emotions and rhythmic R just belongs together. This was another example of our love patch here as well. Now, that was just a little take of the basses. Let me show the electroacoustic guitars here as well. It has a wealth of guitars, both classic electric guitars, but also electroacoustic, which I love. And we're sort of between the acoustic and the electric realm. Let's just start here with this one. More abundances of electroacoustic guitar auras here. Let me just play a couple here on the keys. So this is a good example. I like to use inversions in some of the auras here. So you have sort of darker colors and then goes up. And we can play them all together. And that's essentially what I'm doing here, just two layers of auras. But I could also add with these guys here. I'm adding a little bit of a Juno 60 arpeggiator on top of here. I love this library. There's nothing like the Juno 60. Like if you want those soft cinematic arpeggiations, that's where I would always go to. On top of that, I'm also using a little bit of another analog synthesizer from our analog film base here. Really, really soft Moog synthesizer. Now, another way of using Rhythmic R is also to combine different instruments together. So for example, in this patch here, I got electric guitars and electric violins combined as two different parts. So when we have unique R's per key here, it's unique both for the guitars and for the violins and then just combining them. We got a little bit of help from our Palindrome 1 library and our 808. Let me just show a couple of the combinations here between guitars and violins.
We notice that there's a little bit of melodic movement in there, but not enough to sort of intrude on the music. You know, it's just a vibe. That'd be cool for sort of more like a world kind of action score. And it could be harsh too. And we can combine them. It's very easy to get like new polyrhythms out of it. I mean, it is electric violin and electric guitar. What could possibly go wrong? I love this guy here because it's a little bit of a juxtaposition between distorted and clean. When I created Rhythmic Aura, I wanted all these different kind of tonal textures, but from different instruments. So we've been listening to electric guitars, to guitars, to electric violins, but also took the symphony orchestra and tried to combine that and mangle in different ways here. This particular patch here is both using the symphony orchestra particular orchestral strings and combining them with electric guitars. It's a most unique kind of combo, but I kind of dig it. So simple. It's the 522. It's a little bit from our palindrome playing up here, that sort of a pegated sound. And I mean the 522 as well. It is just so sweet. And combined just these four elements, it's more than enough. We also have a little bit of our hybrid emotions here playing the Serenity patch, so it's very sweet. Aura also fully adapts to your host DAW tempo, particularly in the arpeggiator here, if you activate DAW sync here. But it's also really filter friendly. In this case here, I use the ladder filter here, and you can hear all the fragments sort of become more alive as I move the mod wheel up here. It's super playable that way, and I like to use it sometimes to muffle the auras a little bit. If I feel they're a little too dominating, I'll use the filter and just make them sort of more ambient in their nature. You can also use time here, our time module, meaning that every single fragment doo -doo 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 -doo, will get stretched or shortened when you use the time stretcher. Because every single part of an aura is a unique fragment, we can apply unique time stretching to those fragments. We can modulate that in real time as well. Just check here what happens with the filter. It's almost the score on its own. And granted here, you'll notice that the volume of the electric guitars will increase here. You can always right click on anything inside a sound paint and immediately set it to whatever controller you want here. So sometimes in certain patches, I like to have like control of a volume one part and a filter on another one, whatever you want. They talk about tension and release as the two main aspects in music. That's essentially it, just building up to the drop. And speaking of the drop, here's another example of orchestral strings and electric guitars combined together, but with a little bit of the 522 attitude. known you could use this stuff in dance music as well. Here's a little bit of a taste from our electric violence combined with a couple of different elements.
So for this one, I started with the electric violence here. Added a little bit from our Dunescape library. Added some dark cinematic pulses from our analog modular library. and some extra R's coming up here from our electroacoustic guitars. This is more than plenty for a full soundtrack. The elements are just baked to perfection. I like to see everything we do inside a sound paint in the same way as chefs look at his ingredients. If you have great ingredients, the likelihood of creating a great meal are higher. One of my favorite categories inside a sound paint is our tonal strings. A tonal string, for example, could be the Brazilian barimbau, this sort of one stringed instrument you hit, but it can also be a modified piano. If we notice up here in sound mode, I've isolated one single sample here on A1. It's essentially just a plucked piano playing two different notes. But once I start playing those two notes as different chords, it gets pretty elaborate and then use some filters on it and all of a sudden we have this sort of explosive interstellar kind of sound. I was so happy when I found this one here. This particular key here is just coming from A1. Let me just show you a little more of the whole patch. So for example, we got the Brazilian berimbau here. But as we heard in the beginning here, there's also some beautiful stuff going on with pianos. And I just took this one sample here, went into one note stretch, and now that's playable. And then I set the pitch here way, way down so I could really get a full playable range here. And that for me was like, just one of those discoveries like, okay, that's cool. It's a single sample just playing through these cycles here, but I play chords with them. But I did another little minute demo here also sort of utilizing the similar concept. Just grabbing um, another one of those piano fragments from our tonal strings here and then just throwing a little bit of strings on top of it and a little bit of a film bass and then we got this. This is how I like to use R. I would normally just start having the texture here. Then I would sort of play with a melody like, doo, 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 doo. okay, that worked. And then I would orchestrate around that. But this is sort of the way I intended to design it for myself as an inspiration tool. So let me just remove the strings here and play them live.
Isn't that sweet? I'm using one note stretch here again, using our electric guitars in this case here. Let me just see, it was G sharp three. Let me go back to default so I can just show you a variety of the electric guitars here as well. a lot. There's so much. Let me go back here and just isolate the G sharp three here using one note stretch. And then let me just play a little bit with Nicola Brass' beautiful core on top of it. That was the instrument you heard on top of it. It's a different sound paint library, but I just thought they belong together. I love this library. It's coming from Nicola Brass' Core Library. Um, he creates his own custom instruments. This is his own like custom core. It's just so sweet. So natural a little bit dirty, kind of like we got old school vintage lenses here. There's a little bit of dirt on the lens. I love more raw acoustic recordings. You can hear a human in there. We also got tonal percussion as a part of R1 acoustics. That would be stuff like hang drums or percussion that has tonal qualities to it. In this case here, I just wanted to show you that you can also play with the R outside your sort of normal BPM on the grid kind of way and just add it on top of a normal instrument. In this case here, I took our free 1928 Steinway piano and just added ore fragments on top. It's a very unique sound. Imagine like kitchen percussion meets like beautiful vintage grand piano. Let's just wrap up the video here with the vocals patch here. I just have it loaded here. We have unique samples per key here and just uh, try to mangle it into something crazy, beautiful, who knows. Thank you.